neither the Raja nor the people of Datia wanted that Gwarya Baba should ever leave Datia. But Baba must go to Vrindavana where he thought his yar must be anxiously waiting for him, that his friend is waiting for him in Vrindavana. He quietly sneaked out of Datia on night and went to Vrindavana. In Vrindavana, he went from forest to forest and Kunja to Kunja in search of his friend, but could not find him. He rolled in the dust of Vrindavana and wept and cried. Oh Krishna, oh my friend, my heart, my soul. I don't know. <laughs> Where are you? A lot of pressure. Parts in normal kingdom where the person will go without understanding. Sometimes in imagination, he had as vivid experience of him. As in actual perception. Then he ran towards him. But he disappeared. But he disappeared. And Baba fell senseless on the ground. He could no more bear his separation. In utter desperation and resentment, he gave up his search. He was so much disappointed that he decided to stop searching for Krishna. He said to himself, I have done my best to find him. He seems to eluding me. He is avoiding me. I will no more bother about him. Let him find me. If he, ca if he cares for my friendship, friendship is a two-way traffic, not one. <laughs> he gave up the search and began to pass his time in witnessing Rasalila and training the actors of Rasalila in musical performances, which are an essential part of Rasalila. He hoped that his resentment and show of indifference towards Krishna would have the desired effect and he would come. But this hope was also bellied. There was then no end to his anger. Yeah, he was hoping, but nothing was happening. And he was getting angry already. <laughs> he said to Krishna in his mind, I had heard that you were kind-hearted and loving. If one advanced even a single step, step towards you, you readily moved 10 steps forward to meet and embrace him. 
but this was a lie. I have now discovered that you are most unkind and cruel. Friendship with you means only frustration and suffering. So no more friendship with you. If you are proud of being the prince of Nandagram, I am also proud of being a master of my own self. I wow, wow that if I ever come across you, I shall not even look at you. What a wow. <laughs> That even Krishna will appear now, he says that he will not even look at him. This is incredible. But he was so much angry because he expected that Krishna will come. In resentment, Gwarya Baba stopped chanting his name. He also stopped going to Rasalila and the temples. Not only this, he sometimes stood at the gate of a temple and tried to dissuade people from going in for darshana. So much angry. He was so much angry. He stopped everything, but not just that he stopped for himself. He was standing on the door of the temple and was telling others, don't go inside. <laughs> so he was telling them, brethren, brothers, listen, if you do not want to lose your happiness, do not, do not have anything to do with Krishna. He is most untrustworthy and unkind. He revels, he enjoys only with the gopis of Raja and cares little for anyone else. Sri Krishna was in this way deprived of the darshana of his dear friend, who had become unfriendly and stopped going to the temples. He feared that he might also be deprived of the darshana of his other devotees, if they will listen to this one, <laughs> to Gwarya Baba, if they came under his influence. This was too much for him or Krishna to bear. He felt that he must do something about it. One day at dusk, when Gwarya Baba was roaming about, walking around Raman Reti, he saw a group of cows coming out of the forest. Shortly after, he saw the environment be becoming a glow, <coughs> means glowing more li a light, with the blue luster of the body of a handsome cowherd and heard the sweet notes of his flute. He wore, was wearing a peacock feather on his crown. His curly hair were bedecked or decorated with flowers. And he had a bewitching smile on his lips. Gwarya Baba was thinking, oh, this is Yar. And he shouted, this is Yar. And a shiver 
went through his spine. He forgot his wow. He forgot what he promised not to look at him. With eyes wide open and swimming in tears of love, he kept gazing at Krishna for some time, like one in the state of drunken stupor. Krishna also continued to look at him with eyes full of deep affection. Then both locked each other in long, deep, and loving embrace. After some time, Krishna said, Gwarya, why have you come so late? I have all along been restlessly waiting for you. Oh, now Krishna trying to become, be smart. Like I was waiting for you all the time, yeah? <laughs> this aroused the injured self-conceit of Baba. And he said, stop it. If you were really anxious to meet me, could you not come? You could not because you are the Prince of Raj. I, a poor cowherd. What have you to do with me? He said this and walked away. This is Krishna, but he said this and started to walk away. Krishna said, Gwarya, when shall we meet again? And Gwarya said, you can come and meet me whenever you want. I do not go anywhere out of Raja. So this marked the beginning of the new chapter in the friendship between the two cowherds. They met often and reveled in humor, humorous talks, often full of sarcasm and satire and plays of different kinds. This last time when we read this, that, that they are joking sarcastically with Krishna. This was a total fun. And Mahabhava uh, suggesting from the other side of the room, who taught this sarcasm to, to Krishna? Who teach Krishna jokes? Sarcastic jokes, especially. Of course, Radhika. Because Radhika was, is always joking with Krishna, together with Manjaris. <laughs> so, there was so much joking. Sometimes they lovingly served each other. Sometimes they quarreled. Krishna sometimes met him in disguise. Once Gwarya Baba had gone, gone to Vairata in Jaipur state, with Sen Raghunath and Sri Chantamai, his friends. They returned to Nandagram at about 10 p.m., 10 in the evening. They were tired, so they lay down to sleep without eating anything. At the same time, came a boy with a pot full of milk and said, Baba, Ramakali has sent this milk. Baba was surprised. 
how could Ramakali get the information about his arrival so soon? He took the milk. He and his two friends drank the milk. And the milk had supernatural taste. Though small in quantity, it made them feel full, totally full. The next day, Baba went to the house of Ramkali to return the milk pot. He said, Ramakali, here is your milk pot. The milk you sent was very tasteful. Ramake Ramakeli. Oh, yeah, one time writing, writing Ramakali, one time Ramakeli. Ramakeli was stupefied. She said, she, it's she. <laughs> Baba, when did I send the milk? This pot is not mine. It is perhaps the one I often see in the temple of Nandalal. Baba then went to Nandalal's temple. As soon as <coughs> Kishanlal, the pujari of the temple, saw the pot in Baba's hands, he said, Baba, why did you take away the pot? I have been searching it since morning. Yesterday night, I forgot to take it home and felt, left it after offering milk to Nandalal. Kwaria Baba understood that it was Nandalal himself who had gone to him with the milk. He kept looking at the Sri Vigraha image of Nandalal in the temple for some time while tears of love trickled down his eyes. This is so beautiful that when we understand that our Ishtadev loves us so much, and especially when we feel it, when some things happen in our life that are directed by them, we can feel the same. Because we are all made of love, I will say like that. And everybody is searching for love. And when we feel their love, and we understand that our Ishtadev loves us, they love us unconditionally, <coughs> and that they want us to come to them in our relationship with them. What can person do than to cry from love? and gratefulness. And in the case of this Gwarya Baba, when he understood that this was his Yar, his friend, that came and bring him some food, milk. Of course, he was thankful and started to cry. There, it's interesting. I mean, I believe everybody have similar experiences, but when we were in Radha Kunda, we learned, learned that Radhika is always listening. Like, you are, we are talking about one person, how it would be nice to meet that person. Next moment, that person is appearing there, coming to us. We are sitting, and I remember Radha Kripa Kadasha or Shiva Prada 
was asking, because we took just dry food, was asking, oh, is there somewhere in Radakun to eat some uh, cooked, warm, liquid, more food? And we were, start, we were thinking, okay, have some restaurants, but I don't know, but the level of cleanliness and how we will feel after. And what happened? We went to take darshan of Pran Krishna Das Baba. And he immediately said, oh, go, go take prashad. And we immediately had prashad there with uh, uh, Pran Krishna Das Baba. And this was not little prashad, this was a feast. We were totally surprised. And at the same time, thankful, thinking how Radhika takes care. How much Radhika loves us. And we can, we all can experience this with our Ishtadev. They love us so much. So how somebody could be that they will not love back? You know, when somebody loves you unconditionally, for that person, you want to do anything, whatever you can. And we have great luck that we can do some things in Sadaka body, but also in Sita Deha body. There we can, uh, even there are, is, are less limits on us, what we can do. No limit. So this is beautiful. And this gratefulness bring tears in eyes of devotees naturally once on the occasion of the holy festival baba was staying at the house of goswami kishan kishan lal in nandagram he purchased four kilos of gulab jamuns at the same time, came to Rajavasi boys who used to play the part of Krishna and Balaram in Rasalila. They said, Baba, we are hungry. Give us something to eat. Baba made them both sit in his lap and fed them the gulab jamuns with his own hand. After the boys had eaten to their full, then, sa then said, Baba, no more. We have had our full, our fill. The next day, Baba invited all the dancers and actors of the Rasa Lila group to which the boys belonged. Those boys also came. Baba fed everyone with gulab jamuns. But he said to these boys, I will not feed you today because you were fed yesterday. You were eating gulab jamuns yesterday. But the boys said, Baba, when did we come to you yesterday? We were not even aware of your arrival. If you do not want to feed us, don't. But why tell a lie? Kishan Lal and others who had seen Baba feeding the boys that day said, Boys, it is not Baba, but you who are speaking a lie. We saw Baba feeding you yesterday with our own eyes. Upon this, the Swami of the Rasa Lila party and the other boys of the group exclaimed, These boys were all along with us yesterday. How could they have come here? 
Baba immediately understood that not those boys, but Krishna Balaram had on their guise, disguise, come and sat in his lap and eaten the gulab jamans from his own hand. Yeah, this is very beautiful. Uh, like, we know many stories where Radhika would come in disguise to his, uh, her devotees. And only after they understood, oh, it was Radhika. So, let's continue. Baba understood that not those, uh, sorry. Mm, as Baba realized this, he was overwhelmed with bhava. Tears streamed out of his eyes. His body shivered and he became unconscious. On regaining outward consciousness, he made those boys sit in his lap and fed them as he had fed Krishna Balaram. Gwarya Baba was a frolicsum as his yara, and he sometimes, sometimes surprised people and made them laugh by what he said. When he had lived in Vrindavana for many years, the Raja of Dali, Dalia, Dalia came to know that he was in Vrindavana. He came to Vrindavana and humbly requested him to go to the Dalia with him. He refused, but when the Raja insisted too much, he said, very well, I shall go. The date was fixed. That day, in the morning, Baba went to the Raja and said, I am ready. Let us go. The Raja was surprised to see Baba in the back of a donkey with his face painted black. He said, Baba, why have you come in this shape? What has happened to you? Baba replied, this happens to a man who comes to Vrindavana, the holy land of Krishna, and then thinks of going somewhere. Oh, oh, I, uh, this is understandable. When we were going away from Vrindavana, we were also feeling, how to say, black. <laughs> and black meaning sad. Like you feel like you, you don't want to leave. You want to stay there forever. The Raja fell at Baba's feet and said, Baba, I will never insist that you go to Dalia. I have committed an offense by insisting that you should go to Dalia with me. Kindly forgive me. Maharaj Madhu Singh of Jaipur started building the famous Jaipur temple in Vrindavana. Gwarya Baba also began to work with the laborers. Out of the wages he got, he purchased parched gram and distributed it amongst the laborers. Once the Maharaja came to see how the construction was going on, he saw a tall, stout person with lustrous looks working among the laborers. With greater enthusiasm than others. On coming near, he recognized him as Gwarya Baba. 
he was surprised. He said, Baba, how are you here? You must not do this work. But Baba said, why? You serve the Lord with money. I serve with my body. Who are you to interfere? Then Maharaja felt ashamed and he said, Baba, I shall be happy if you kindly visit Jaipur. But Baba said, Yara does not want that. I should leave uh, Vrindavana. But Maharaj said, you have been invited by Govindaji. He had sent me to invite you. If he had sent you to invite me, I shall go. How can I refuse to accept this invitation? He went to Jaipur with Maharaja. After a few days, he became ill, became sick. The royal physician began to treat him. During this period, he wrote a letter to Govardhan Lalji, the Tikayala of Natadvara, saying, I have captured a lion, you prepare a cage for him. I will go to Natadvar with the lion. He said to the Maharaja, I will now go to Natadvar. Maharaj said, you are ill. Go when you feel well, when you get well. But he did not listen. Therefore, the physician gave him medicine for a month. He took the entire medicine in a single dose and said, Now I must get well. Surprisingly, he became all right the same day. He reached Natadvar and the Tikayal said, Baba, where is the lion? Baba asked, where is the cage? The Tikayala showed him the cage and Baba went into the cage and sat there and said, lion is in the cage. <laughs> Who will understand huh? these people? <laughs> While in Natadvar, Gwarya Baba was free and fearless like a lion. He did what he liked and no one could say anything to him. One day, he saw Damodar Lalji, the son of Tikayala, wearing a coat, pant and a tie. He called him. When he came near, he gave him a slap and said, he slapped him. Is this the traditional dress of the family to which you belong? <laughs> then he went to the jail and said to the jailer, I have committed an offense. Put me in jail. The jailer was taken aback. He could not obey, but he also did not have the courage to disobey. <laughs> yeah. He stood meekly before him with folded hands, not knowing what to do. But Baba entered into the jail and began to live like a prisoner. When the Tikayala came to know about it, he went to the jail. He said to Baba, Baba, you did well. 
You have taught a good lesson to my son. Now kindly come out of the jail. So, just watching the time, because I said one hour, because usually stories are shorter and we can do them in one hour, but this one needs at least 30 minutes more, <laughs> how many pages have. So, do you all agree that I continue? Hmm? Okay. Baba came out and left for Vrindavana. And in Vrindavana, he stayed in the ashrama of Sida Sri Ramakrishna Das Pandit Baba. Once he went to Bharshana. One day, he kept sitting there in a garden till late at night, lost in the thought of his yar. He heard some thieves planning to commit theft in the house of a Goswami. He went to them and said, I am also a thief. I shall go with you and participate in the theft. <laughs> the thieves agreed. They entered the house of the Goswami with Baba. They started collecting things which they thought were worth stealing. Baba happened to see the deity Gopal sleeping in a small temple in the house. He went near the deity and said, Yar, I have come to your house. You should entertain me, but you are asleep. Now get up and give me something to eat. Gopal was in deep sleep. He did not get up. Baba said, you will not get up like this. He picked up the bell in the temple and began to strike it hard. He was ringing the bell so hard. The thieves left everything they had collected and ran away. <laughs> so, <laughs> funny. In that way, he saved belongings of that Goswami. For some time, Baba lived in Mathura and taught, taught music to a person named Mungamal. There was in Mathura a haunted house, a house with some ghost in it, called Bhut Mahal, the haunted castle which had been lying vacant for a number of years. Vacant, uh, abandoned, abandoned. The ghost in it liked everyone else who came to live in it. Leaked, uh, what? As it's, I think it's a grammatical error, so it's difficult to say. It's leaked or liked. <laughs> Baba hired the house for 50 rupees per month. He asked Mungamal to get the house cleaned by someone. Mungamal tried to find someone who could do it and promised to pay him handsomely. But no one agreed. Everybody was afraid. With great difficulty, Baba made a laborer agree by assuring him that he would also do the cleaning with him. The house was cleaned and Baba began to live in it. 
One day, Baba said to Mungamal, I am teaching music, music to the ghost in the house. You may come along with me and hear it if you want. Mungamal went with Baba. As soon as Baba brought out his harmonium and kept it one, uh, on, on, the, on the floor of the room, it began, began to be played and the room resounded with its sound. Mungamal was frightened. Therefore, Baba asked the ghost to stop playing. Oh, it was playing, played by the ghost. And the ghost obeyed. The ghost wanted to be delivered from his birth as a ghost. Baba performed a yagya and he was delivered. The haunted house no more remained haunted. After this episode, Baba became famous in Mathura and crowds of people, mostly women, started coming to him. They become a problem. He thought of a strange device to solve it. He went to a place called Pana. I oh, know the name. She went to Pana, the most beautiful prostitute of Matura, and said, If you agree to go out for a drive in the city with me for a few days, I shall reward you handsomely. She agreed. The people of Matura saw Baba driving with her in a carriage every evening for a few days. They stopped going to him because they thought he was licentious, but that he was bad <laughs> in a way. This is interesting because we also know that in today, today have also some Babas that are in a, some way hiding from others. And before there were also Babajis who were hiding from people. Gorky Shordas Babaji was chanting in a toilet and living in a toilet, just that people will not disturb him. So this was this was his way to get rid of so many people coming and disturbing him. Did this make any difference to Baba? He had risen to a plane which was much above the reach of Maya. Praise and blame, lust and licentiousness had no meaning for him. Siddha saints like him, like him live in the world of Maya. So Siddha saints like him live in the world of Maya without being touched by Maya. Just as Lotus stands in the muddy water without being touched by it. An example of Gwariya's Baba's complete detachment from the world provided by another episode. He once hired a room in Brahmachariji's temple in Vrindavana. He decorated it with chandeliers of different colors hanging from the roof, big glasses fixed to the walls, and costly carpets spread on the floor. He sat on the carpet, resting against a big velvety pillow and rest in silk. One day, while he thus sat in his room, his friend Giri Darwal happened to come. He was surprised to see Baba in this shape, and he said, Baba, what is this? 
What has happened to you? I have become a Raja, replied Baba. <laughs> the next day, he invited the Rajavasis and asked them to take away everything in the room. They looted everything and enjoyed the loot. They took everything and enjoyed this, that they got this. Who can say why Baba performed this Leela? Was it because he wanted to impress upon people the trifling character of everything belonging to this world so that they might practice detachment? Complete detachment from the world is possible only when one is wholly surrendered and attached only to the Lord. The extent to which Gwariya Baba was attached to the Lord appears from what happened to him once at the time of the Abhishek or baiting ceremony of the deity in Jaipur. Jatipur, sorry, Jatipur. The Goswami first poured ghee on the deity then medicinal water and other things. At the end, he poured sugar on him in such a way that he was completely covered by it. Then he started pouring water drop by drop. When water made the sugar melt, and some part of the body of the deity became visible, the devotees watching the ceremony shouted, Quick, quick, Yara is feeling suffocation. He shouted in a manner which showed that he was himself feeling suffocation and was about to die on account of breathlessness. The Goswami then poured good poured uh, good quantity of water at once, uh, and sugar was instantaneously removed from the face of Gopal. Baba then heaved a sigh of relief. He said to the Goswami, "Do not do this again." for the deity has life and breathes. One day Baba called any people for a meeting in Rangaji's temple in Vrindavan. No one knows what the purpose of the meeting was. When everyone had come, Baba said, brethren, I have called you today so that you may have a condolence meeting on my death. Everyone laughed to hear this because he thought that Baba had played a big joke. But it was not a joke. Baba insisted on their having a condolence meeting and he said, Suppose that I am dead and that you are here for a meeting to condole on my death. You will condole on my death when I really die. If you do it now, I will also see it. So do it now. Do not do it after my death. On his insistence, the condolence meeting was duly held. Several people spoke and expressed their condolences. Baba enjoyed their speeches. After they had spoken, Baba said, Brothers, 
you need not you need not be sorry at my death death is only to the body not to me i am under order of transfer my yar has transferred me on promotion from a place where my meeting with him are casual to a place where the meetings will be eternal. Wow. So instead of condoling on my death, rejoice at my transfer and bid me farewell on the eve of my departure. Only a few days after this, Gwarya Baba left his physical body and departed from this world in a transcendental body to meet his Yara, Yara, his friend, and remain with him eternally in his eternal abide, the transcendental Vrindavana. So beautiful. And I believe everybody can uh, feel themselves with their Ishtadev and how we are developing our connection with Radhika as Manjaris. And how interesting it was said that this time the meetings are here and there, coming, going. But after we get transfer orders that, that we must go, we want to go to eternally be with our Ishtadev, with our Radhika, as a Manjari. And that's our goal, that's our desire to be with them. So, this was the first day that uh, I was reading this. Uh, and this story was really long. But some stories are shorter, so there will, there will be more time also to talk about uh, subjects which are, which are mentioned in the stories. And uh, translation, definitely. We will work on that for the next time. And... Uh, Mahabhava will also join us from the next time, fully. So, I hope you like the story and you got what you needed from that story. Uh, I don't know, Gurudev, uh, we can't hear you because it's muted on your side. Maybe somebody can unmute. Jan Anderson, you want to say something? Hmm. So don't be scared to join in, to say something. Don't be shy. Yeah. Just everybody can comment and join in, in, in sharing. So thank you for joining today. And see you next week. We will continue with the next story. And we can uh, dive. dive in the nectar of lives of saints of Raja. Mm -hmm. Radha, 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 Radha.